vaut mieux qu'un mât, qu'un maxi maximum, un minimum, si l'intention est bonne, vaut mieux qu'un mât, qu'un maxi. Hello from Avignon's 78th Theatre Festival, where for three weeks, dance, drama and everything adjacent fills the streets here and takes over the city's cultural venues. The official programme here includes a few dozen shows, but with the fringe events as well, it means there's more than 1,600 productions to choose from. Festival director Tiago Rodriguez is revisiting a Greek tragedy with an ill-fated heroine, Hecuba, at its centre. And after welcoming the world's English speakers last year, he's elected Spanish the language of choice this time, inviting artists from Chile, Argentina and Peru to stage their work here in the south of France. Kicking off proceedings, Spanish director Angelica Lido with her dark and daring tribute to filmmaker Ingmar Bergman in the court of honour of the Palais des Papes. And French actress Jeanne Balibar is lending her talents to Spanish literature's most celebrated and most eccentric hero, Don Quixote, in a new imagining of the story, Quichotte, directed by Gwenaël Morin. These écrits sont sans doute ceux d'un nécessiteux ou d'une nécessiteuse qui nécessite mon nécessaire soutien et ma nécessaire protection. This is a topical play. It's not that the author 400 years ago would have had intuitions about today. It's more that we're sorely lacking in imagination about the world that we'd like to build together right now. And I think that Quixote's madness, or the poet's madness, forces us to use, to elevate and to develop our imagination. From a 17th century literary epic to more contemporary concerns, Argentinian playwright Lola Arias is bringing her latest piece of documentary theatre to the festival, Los Dias Afuera, The Days Out There, features a group of women adjusting to freedom after serving prison sentences. We're off to meet her. So me hice 13 tatuajes. El gato de Alicia. <laughs> La geisha, la bruja, la mariposa. Lola Arias, hello. Hi. Your latest play is a follow-up to your film, Reas, which focuses on a very specific group of characters. They're back now. But first, just tell us how you got to know them and how you created this drama together. Uh, this project started in 2019 when I was giving workshops in the prison of Ezeiza in Buenos Aires. I was giving workshops of cinema and theatre inside of the prison. And there I met some of the protagonists of the film and the play. And then I decided to make a film first, which is called Reas, which tells the story of them inside of the prison. And during the shooting, they were asking me, and what do we do next? And we said, well, let's do a play. And the play is about freedom, is about how is it when you come out of jail. These stories are inspired by real life and then transposed to the stage in what we'd call documentary theatre. Now, I know mm -hmm. that you work across many different media, many platforms, film, exhibitions, performances. Tell us about the specificities of bringing documentary drama to the stage. For example, what were the challenges you encountered when making uh, the days uh, out there? I think making a piece with people who had been in jail, it's more complicated than making a film because to make a piece and to make it tour, you have to create a whole like uh, structure around them. They had to get contracts in the state theater, so they had to get the bank accounts and they had to get the medical insurance and we have to find the ways for them to be also able to come here. So passports and visas and it's a, social in reinsertion process because you have to actually um, make them go back to society in a way that they can have all the rights and all the possibilities that they lost over the years uh, in prison. Music and dance is very important in uh, your work in mm -hmm. this play. Your characters use their bodies, their voices to express themselves, but I wondered if you hesitated when it came to blending this serious 
social subject matter with the light-hearted genre of musical theater? Yeah, I decided to do a musical in the film and in the play because musicals are always portraying marginal worlds in a very aestheticized way with the beautiful dancers and singers, but never with the people who actually experience this situation. So for me, it was a way of them to reappropriate the genre and somehow become them the protagonist. Uh, you see these bodies, you see that they had been going through this experience. And even if the choreographies are not like uh, virtuous choreography, they are charming and beautiful. Well, speaking of dance and movement, this year the festival's invited choreographer Boris Charmatz to participate as an associated artist. Now, he's creating three different pieces for the official program. It takes quite an experimental approach. One of those pieces focuses on the form of the circle. It takes in 200 dancers, both amateur and professional. And our reporter, Natasha Milleret, went to check it out. Electro-pop, dappled sunshine and a very relaxed mood, just a stone's throw away from Avignon's historical centre. The audience is spellbound, but this is not a final polished performance, more a contemporary dance workshop. A three-day artistic exploration undertaken by 20 professional dancers and 180 enthusiastic amateurs. Cercle or circles is inspired by the circular form. Pulling everyone into its orb, spectators can come and go as they please, and it's free to attend. What's interesting with the circular form is that it means there's no front and back of the stage. Spatially, we're all at the same level or equally visible. I like the idea that I belong to something bigger. It's like a shoal of fish moving as one entity. I find that really beautiful. Circles is a glimpse into the creative approach of choreographer Boris Sharmatz, who believes in bringing art to public spaces and getting everyone involved. For him, it's also a political gesture at a time when certain voices would rather see a less multicultural art scene in France. Avignon's Theatre Festival is an example of an open-minded European international event which takes place in France but attracts attention from all over the world. It's simple, this is the image of France that we want to defend. Cultural values he'll be taking to Germany with this show as well. Charmatz is set to repeat the experience with another crowd in Wuppertal, where he directs the dance centre founded by iconic choreographer Pina Bausch more than 50 years ago. Lola, Rias, the film, and Los Dias Afuera, the play, features a group of people that includes uh, cisgender women, a transgender man, a transgender woman. Trans rights seem to be up for debate in many countries right now, and there are arguments that single-sex spaces, like prisons, for example, should exclude trans people. What did you learn about this issue, working with them? So, prisons are a very binary system. So there is the female prison and the male prison. And the non-binary people, they don't know what to do with them. And actually, what we see and what we hear in the piece is that Nacho, a trans man, and Noelia, a trans woman, they were both like going from the man prison to the female prison, like, and nobody knew what to do with them. And they experienced very dangerous situations in the male prison. And at the end, they were put in the female prison. But uh, what is interesting is that they reflect that the only answer that the system gives to what to do with them is to isolate them. And in fact, the reality in the female prison is that everybody that ends in the female prison, non-binary people, trans people, they managed to get together in a community with the cis women in a very good way. And, and somehow they are also helping each other. There is a lot of love involved. And all these uh, relationships are actually very present in the film and in the piece. Argentina has a rich history and tradition of theater, of performing arts. But one of the first decisions Javier Milei took as president when he came in was to close the Ministry of Culture, far-right politicians are notoriously uh, hostile to the arts. How do you see this affecting creativity in Argentina today and, and in the future? I was in Argentina rehearsing this piece 
just after Milet, Milet got elected. So we spent most of the time rehearsing or in demonstrations, rehearsing and going back to the streets. So actually, we have been very actively uh, reacting to everything that happened, which was the closing of the Institute of Cinema, the closing of the Institute of Theatre. And nevertheless, the feeling that we have is that it's not that the power of the people is not translated into what happens in the parliament. The moment of uh, a lot of resistance and a lot of organization, but it's also a moment where we are actually thinking what are the strategies to go on. Your work always deals with these social, political, historical questions. When it comes to getting the public to engage with these important subjects, why do you think theatre has a special power? Theatre is about here and now. You are sharing the space together. And this encounter is so important to activate the power of the people to react, to, to get empathic, to realize where we are. And I think this is something very unique about theater. You don't manage to get this impact with cinema because there is always a distance. There is a time where the film was shot and a time where we witnessed this Film. These people are here, they are in Avignon, they managed to get over these borders with their criminal records after a big effort and now they are living this experience that is amazing for them. And this is such an empowering experience for them that will change their lives and I hope it will change also the life of the spectators. We're wrapping up the show with an existential question. Qui sommes, or who are we in Catalan? That's what the circus troupe Baro de Vel is asking in their creative, colorful, energetic performance featuring acrobats, musicians, clowns, and even a ceramicist. We'll leave you with a preview. Otherwise, do check in with us here next time on Ask 24.